Greetings. Greetings, thank you. How may I help you? Is it Saraswati? I am Saraswati. Oh, thank you for coming. I like you very much. Thank you. It is nice to hear. I was introduced to your name by, uh, by chant. I started liking the chant first, and then I sort of researched a little bit about you. Yes. I am also known as Sarah, and I am also part of, I have many names in other places. Which ones? Can you, can you share? Suvia, and there are others, but it's not important because they're not from here. Oh, so Sufi is not Sophia from Greece? So, oh, yes, Sophia, yes. Wow. Then we already met under that name. Um, so my question today is about uh, the migration of the Jews to from, from India, supposedly to Egypt. Is it, was it, how did it happen or did it happen? Well, yes, it did happen, because at that time there were a great amount of belief systems, but there was a division in the peoples from Hindi to Judaism, but it wasn't called that at that time. It was the Jews were, that you are seeing now were considered the ones that were rebelling against those that were in power in the Indian areas. The reason there was a dispute and an exodus for them is because the aliens were taking over in that area and we knew that they were from a different place and that they were not gods. We believed only in one God, but they would have us believe in them as gods. And we could not do so because we knew that they were flawed and we could see it. But many believed that they were not flawed. Uh, and so they followed them and worshipped them and became, some of them became the gods of Hinduism. Krishna, Vishnu, Ganesh, etc. And we could not abide by them because they were not flawless, especially Shiva. He was angry, he was deceptive, he was judgmental. We could not see them as gods and so we had to leave and a group of us left and we went a couple different directions. Some of us decided to head in the way of Israel, and some of us went in the way of Egypt. So it was that there was uh, a different thought process, even within the tribe of Judah. So who was promising Israel to Jews? That would be, well, there was more than one actually when they they sort of claimed it for the oh, we sort of claimed it for our own when we got there it was there was very few people that were um what is the word they they had no learning and so they were more or less people of the earth and we had more learning and could read at least some of us could and so we sort of uh, were able to lead them into a higher understanding of what we were doing. And so we actually taught the, the people of Israel, if you want to call them that, um, what we were doing and what we believed and sort of uh, claimed the area for ourselves. They had no claim on it in some ways because they did not believe in property ownership, nor did we at that time. And so we still mingled with them 
but we overtook them in many ways because we had higher learning and we had uh, disciplines that they did not have. And we did things differently and they liked the way that we did things and the way we talked to them and the way they were. And we learned their language eventually and they learned ours, but it took a while. We more or less learned theirs. Those that went Egypt way were crossed over a clock in across um, the Mediterranean, of course, but it was the 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 islands were a little different at that time, but they were able to cross over rather easily through the the Greek islands. I see. Um. So there was a story that it was uh, Hanuman who led people to Egypt. Was it the same migration or a different migration? That was that was one of them, yes. There was more than one because remember, in the time when uh, the original India, when the uh, everything was getting started, some people were unhappy with the beliefs, some people were happy, others became disenchanted later. So there was a couple different groups at different times. And they, they had different ideas about how uh, to believe in a one God, but it was basically Judaism. Um, and, it be, and as the, those ones went to uh, Egypt, they had the same belief as we did that there was only one God. And many of the stories from Samaria about the flood and other stories about how Lucifer began and different things like that came from the Sumerian tablets. They are the same stories, only brought over into a one God thought process. As you read the Sumerian tablets, you will realize that there are lots of things that go move from the Sumerian tablets into the what is called the Torah. Right. Um, so there was also a Kenatan, um, the um, Pharaoh, which uh, believed in the one God. Yeah. Was it any overlay between uh, Jews believing in one God and uh, Kenatan? Yes. We, as a people, went into Egypt and at first were very accepted. Um, the story was that uh, Akhenaten was very impressed by us and our learnings and what the things that we knew from uh, the teachings of the aliens, because there was some practical teachings that we brought with us, of course, and he was uh, impressed by our intellect and our ways. But after, but you know, after Akhenaten, Akhenaten, things went back to the old ways. And that is when we were, became uh, less important to the Egyptians. We just became um, uh, followers of the Egyptian way, but we kept our beliefs and they did not like that. And so that is why we were considered a subsection of Egypt. I, not myself, we were, in, we were in another place, but we learned that they became a subset of Egypt, a secondary people in the land, and they were not accepted fully by, the, uh, by those that were in charge because they saw the difference in the skin, the difference in the, uh, the features and all these things, and were prejudiced, basically. And because there was a one God belief, and there were many Egyptian gods because they all wanted to be worshipped that way, um, there was a, a definite uh, split in the beliefs. Even, so while there, even while Agnaughton had a one belief system, there were still many beliefs in the peoples. Right. So you cannot say that uh, Egypt was founded by uh, people from India who became Jews later. No, they were already there when we got there. 
Okay. Um, I find, uh, uh, and later in Egypt, um, the war hexes, which wore beards and looked like Jews on, yeah. uh, on the picture. So, so it was a different migration or how did it happen? Or it was the same, same people? It was the same people. There was more of them coming in. Uh, at the time of Akhenaten, more came in because they heard it was a safe and wonderful place. And it, it did influence the leadership in some ways at that time because of Agnaton accepting a one god system. Of course, he had many lesser gods, but he believed in the one great god. So that's why he was a quasi one god believer. Um, the, there was smaller gods, but he believed in one great god. Whereas after him, they went in to say that all these other gods were basically e equal uh, and except for um, perhaps some moments in history, there was ones that were greater such as Ra and he was the sun god. And, but the sun god also, uh, underneath the sun god was an umbrella of other gods that were almost as great. All right, so um, one of the parallels I found when I researched Yogananda, and he comes from um, Bengal. He's a Bengali. Yes. And uh, I just discovered that ben Bengalis have uh, among Indians uh, are treated more like Jews for some reason. They have some features of like being peaceful and intellectual in some ways. And uh, they uh, are not normally not being hired as soldiers because they're not good in fighting. Um, and there were some other national characters. So I wonder if Bengali were among the uh, people who gave birth to Jews. They were in some ways, yes. But you, you must remember this, that uh, the Bengali were, were an aboriginal people of that area. And they were so, so peaceful and related to the area in many ways. That's what made them so calm and peaceful, is that this had been their area for a very long time before anyone came in. You understand that? Okay. And so, they were land lovers. They were lovers of all things and were peaceful and did not have any uh, will to fight, nor did they have any will to cause problems because their lives had been under the belief system that God or that all things, they had a more pantheistic belief that God was everywhere and in anything in everything and all around and and was in that belief system that they should stay uh peaceful calm and loving and that overcomes the great disasters that overcomes the storms that overcomes anything negative that comes to them they've learned to work peacefully through all negativity so they were advanced in that way, but they, and, but they were hard workers, but they were not, were not given to war or use of any kind of weapons. The only thing they used sharp instruments for was for hunting. And they even had less, uh, at some point their hunting started to go down because they, they, although they thanked the gods for the hunting and all these things, they became a little bit more vegetarian in, in some ways. And, and it is that they became a little bit more peaceful with the land, even still. Okay. Uh, so, um, now, I'm... Uh seen a pretty distant parallel, but uh, I guess in Russia it's pretty popular uh, to think of uh, Jews as Zeta Grays. As Zeta Grays? 
Yes. Uh, basically, the observation is that the zeta grays are known to inject their genes into the population and then take over the planet and um, uh, exploit its resources. And the Jews have noticed, have noticed to, to do that in the history, like Hexas went to Egypt and Egypt uh, was exploited and by, by the foreigners, essentially. Well, yes and no, but go ahead. And the same thing happened, I guess, in Poland and Russia, where uh, Jews, and also in, in Spain, when Jews took so much of the economy that uh, the economy suffered from their exploitation because they were foreigners exploiting their native people. This, so it, I is wonder... true, it is true that we took, just as I was explaining that we took over Israel when we went there, we did take, we did take over. Um, and it was because of how we were uh, brought into understanding that we were intellectual, that we were um, uh, able to, to work the land and organize the land better than those that were there. And so it was more or less that we exploited by way of knowing more and being able to be a more organized in the way we did things. And so when we went into places, we were able to take over because we had more learning about how to do things and how to run things than the people that were already there. Now, the Zeta Grays uh, were, were very similar, but, but in a very different way. They were forceful. They did it by force in, in many ways. They would come in and it be unkind. Whereas we as the Jewish people came in and exploited in a very kind way, in many senses, what we need. Uh, we showed them how to do things. We uh, taught them this, that, and the other thing. But yet as we are teaching them, we are the teachers and we, we rise to the top. Do you understand that? Right. We become mm -hmm. the greater organizers, we become the greater understanders, and we become the teachers. And that is how we rise up more, more kindly and a little more gently. Not always, but mostly. But the Zeta Grays, which we did know of at that time, were much more forceful. Right. So in, in Torah, there is uh, so many descriptions of Jewish violence and um, basically doing genocide on cities. Is it real or is it uh, brought from elsewhere? There was, there was a section of our population that was so irritated and, and angry about the teachings of the Hindu peoples that they did take... Uh, uh, the, that section of the population did take a violent turn, but it was short-lived. Because reading Torah, it looks like uh, most of the Jewish history was very violent. Well, the thing is, you, when you're reading the Torah, you're not reading all about us completely. You're reading about all the different things that were happening to us, and from other things, you're, the Zeta Grays were attacking the, the planet at that time. And many things that are attributed to God, all these different terrible acts, are actually Zeta Gray activities. And they are trying to destroy um, and take over in many areas. And if you read it with that in mind, with with the context that Zeta Grays are there and they are trying to take over, you will see, read it in a slightly different way. You will see a lot of violence and you will, there, many of people will call them Jews that are, because they took on the identity of a Jewish population to get into where they needed to go. But you'll understand that the Jews themselves, like myself, were not that violent. 
All right. Um, let me shift forward uh, a few thousand years. Um, so I'm reading now a book on uh, on uh, genetics, uh, the modern research of uh, population migration based on genetic analysis. And it's fascinating because lots of migrations can be traced pretty well. And some of that can be also confirmed by history, ar archaeology, and uh, languages. So what they mentioned there in passing was that uh, Ashkenazi Jews, the, the northern Jews, uh, basically came, came 600 years ago. It's uh, around 14... Uh, 1400-something. Um, do you know anything about that uh, coming? Where from did they come? Was it uh, an alien, some sort of an alien seeding, or where from did the Ashkenazi Jews come? It looks like they, they just multiplied in 1400s a lot, so there was nothing, and then they just appeared, and they, they uh, populated the Europe. about their appearance in Europe? I mean, they didn't exist before. It looks like they just were created or converted. It's either created or converted. That's they were, Well, they were given a name, but because they were slightly different. But it, it, it is that they came from Russia, I believe, if, you're to, if you're, they're the same ones I'm thinking of. But they were with a different thought process than the, the ones that were there before. So I see them as being uh, created or taught by the Zeta Grays in some ways, and maybe even uh, disguised to be humans by Zeta Grays. I do not know a lot about them. I see. It is possible that they came from Russia because there was uh, uh, the leftover of, uh, it's called Khazar Kingdom, Khazar Kingdom. And it was uh, south, southern Russia, like north of uh, Black Sea yes. and north and east of Black Sea. And it, it was Jewish. And yes, uh, I believe they did come from Russia now that I am I'm looking back trying to relate to that particular time period. I wasn't there, of course. But it is that it, they migrated from Russia and they were, they took on a very different attitude as they entered in to other places. And what's interesting, uh, Ashkenazi are very closely related. So it's, uh, that was like, a point where there were very, very, very few of them, and cre and they multiplied into uh, millions, not not huge number, but millions. And and then uh, and uh, I just wonder how much of uh, alien genetics is there. That's that's my question. I would say thirty-three percent. Wow. Uh, yeah, Yell told me that uh, this could be Yael. But we did at that point we didn't discuss which which fraction of the Jews were Yale, so that, that is to be clarified. Yes, there is a portion of different species within the U within the Jewish population, but perhaps thirty three percent or less was uh, gray. Mm. But the so, most of it would be thirty three percent. So uh, at some point. Uh, German fascists wanted to extinguish uh, the genocide on the Jews and uh, reduce, it, reduce the Jewish population of Europe through genocide a lot. It was like maybe in, in half, that was cut in half or, or more. In some countries it was 99%. So, uh, and also they were following uh, gypsies, which also came from India, and uh, schizophrenics. And they define schizophrenics as uh, very interesting, that they, as feeble-minded, basically. They wanted people to be more digital and less dreamy, more decisive, less dreamy. So I wonder 
was it by chance or there was there like a, a special reason for genetic for, for for genocide maybe there was some incompatibility well, between uh, another, one. another species was coming down and they knew that the jews had a great deal of alien influence and could see that they would be a problem if they wanted to take over and so they wanted to get rid of as many Jews as possible, so that they would be the more intellectual, they would be the more leading edge toward um, guiding the people. They would rather not deal with another alien force, but rather just eliminate them. Were this uh, the ones from Orion or from Sirius? They were the ones from, they were called the Nords. Uh huh. The Nordic. So they came from uh, Orion and Pleiades? Pleiades, mostly. Some of them uh, had migrated to Orion, and but most of them were from the Pleiades. Uh-huh. So it was purely a practical reason. There is no underlying like an energetic reason for that. We saw it more as they were being practical. The the um, the Nords were very uh, could be very charming if they wanted to be. However, they were also very hostile. If they if there's someone stood in their way, they would not think twice about eliminating them. And at this point, we were standing in their way. I understand. Oh. So for me, it was uh, a very interesting reunion between my Russian roots, which are partially Nordic, right? And, yes. and Jewish roots, which are uh, different. And uh, attraction to India, it all comes together. It looks like it all comes from the same source. Yes. Uh, can you tell a little bit about your personality? Were you alien? Personal? Not, I was not, uh, I did not come down on a ship, but I was born from alien stock into this world. Can you tell me more? Thank you. And at the time when I was born, aliens have been on this planet and inhabiting areas of it for quite a while. But I was not told that I was an alien. I was told that I was from this place. And I learned later that from my lineage that in the, the great, great grandfather and grandmother were, uh, were not from this planet. So what, what roots do you have? What roots do I have? I, the ones that are recorded. I mean, I do not remember all the names of the places. Where I, I mean, was. the, the alien genetics, were you like from human looking people, aliens or yes. uh, blue, blue aliens or? Um, Anunnaki had created a, a species of human looking aliens basically oh. and we're you look like what i look like but you are actually a, an alien as well you are not from this planet no one that looks like you is actually from this planet okay so what connections do i have or what connection did you have there was changes in the genetics from the from many millennia ago and yes neanderthal man did exist in cro magnon and all those different creatures but they were changed genetically into humans there is no missing links there is only a genetic re-establishment there so you will not find a missing link you will find that there has been a genetic 
manipulation. And you are giving a greater understanding, a greater intellect, and all these things because of what the Anunnaki did. And uh, what is the timing of your uh, physical life? How long did you live? We were 20,000 years ago. Ah. Uh -huh. And how long was your life? I believe in human terms, our life was about 130 or 140 years old. Having, having been from pretty much alien stock at that time, we had not gotten used to the way that um, our people lived much longer and eventually became uh, normal lifespans for this planet because of the way things are on this planet. And it just, uh, we were living a little longer than, than people live now. Um, did you incarnate many times? Did I connect? What do you mean by that? Uh, did you incarnate? Incarnate? A few times. Yes. On this planet, I have. Yes. So when, when uh, you're called Safiya, it was a different incarnation? That was a different incarnation. And Sophia was a creator being. As, as I was before I into in before I reincarnated the first time I was in the creator realm. I Sophia see. was a new kind of personality, very forceful, loving and forceful, but creative as well. Like the Anunnaki, she wanted to make uh, a better human. So the, she did work with the Anunnaki of, with that. So you're... That incarnation. You're being respected as Sarah in Jewish tradition and Saraswati in India. Was it yes. the same life or two different lives? It was... It, the, it was two different lives. But... You have to understand, they were probably 400 years apart. I see. Uh, so tell me about Saraswati life. We have like a few minutes left. Uh, did you really do arts? What did you do? I loved arts, absolutely. That was part of who I was. A cre I've always been a creative person and always will be. Um, arts were part of who I was. But also people, I, I'm very engaging with people. Now, there are those that would say I wasn't in the Sarah life, but the Sarah life was much more difficult than the, than the other one. So I just it was more free to be myself. All right. Uh, thank you very much for the interview. It was a, um, a pleasure and an honor to connect to you. It's a, it's a, a much nicer connection this time, uh, th this way. Very um, nice. Would you like to do a blessing in any language you like, like any of the languages you spoke then, back then? Well, I, there's the ancient languages. There's the ancient Sumerian language. Thank you. Can you translate? It's may God richly bless you and help you to understand all the things that you need to know for this life, for your mission, and for the good of humanity. May it all come together for you in the greatest way possible, so that God will be honored. 
Thank you much. You are welcome. That's all I have for today. Thank you much for coming. Hello? Hey. Hello. Welcome.